in the 1980s of America, a little-known hobby game was propelled into the national spotlight by a series of shocking events. Dungeons and Dragons was released in 1974. It was a groundbreaking game, using only paper, pencils, some funny shaped dice, and players' imagination that launched a whole new genre. One player took on the role of the Dungeon Master, who controlled and described the world to the other players. Everyone else was a player character, an adventurer in an open sandbox style magical land filled with fantastical creatures. Physical and mental attributes for the character, such as strength or intelligence, were determined by rolling three six-sided dice. Adventurers would often seek treasure and to have their character grow in power and fame by going forth and slaying monsters who had been guarding treasure for it or precious artifacts. All while in reality, often sitting around a table all day and binging on junk food. And the art did little to help this sinful perception. What of the name? Dungeons through history had long been dark, hidden places where terrible deeds would take place. And the dragon has long represented Satan in Christian theology. It was these attributes, along with the heavy featuring of magic casting and diabolic imagery, that led some to wonder if it promoted witchcraft and worship of the devil in the young. But panic wouldn't truly set in till a series of dark events, all connected to people who play the game, began to occur. Sixteen-year-old James Egbert, a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons, disappears from Michigan State University while there for a summer program. It was rumored that he would play the game in the steam tunnels under the college and became lost in the fantasy. He was found a month later in New Orleans, having run away, but would go on to commit suicide in 1980. Sixteen-year-old Irving Poling commits suicide after allegedly receiving a curse during a game session. His mother would go on to sue both the school where he played and TSR, the game's publisher. The case would be dismissed in 1984. Eighteen-year-old Mary Toey is murdered by Ron Adcox and Darren Molitor after a Friday the 13th party, all of whom were Dungeons and Dragons players. The 17-year-old Molitor blamed Dungeons and Dragons for desensitizing him to violence and luring him away from God. Chris Pritchard convinces two of his fellow Dungeons and Dragons players, James Upchurch and Neil Henderson, to murder his stepdad and mother with the promises of riches. Only the mother survives the attack. The satanic panic faded with the end of the decade. Was Dungeons and Dragons just an innocent game of imagination? Or is the devil in the detail?